Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is LV and I hope you guys are all doing well. Thank you for watching again. If you're new to this channel, this is my YouTube channel where I talk about plant, plant publications and uh, semi-hydroponics. So today we are going to talk about perlites. <laughs> Let's get started. So um, today I just want to share my experience. I am not, again, as an expert. I'm also new in this uh, perlite things. I think like um, it's very important to do a lot of research um, before even jumping in but I couldn't really find so many videos about doing a perlite or any type of reliable semi-hydroponics video because like, in my opinion to be successful in semi-hydroponics your plants are supposed to be either growing faster in the leaf growing rate or like uh, the leaf size is bigger than the previous leaf the benefit of doing like that is it's less work supposed to like you don't fresh it you don't water it all the time you're not guessing second guessing when you should water your plants and there's no fungus nuts that flying around that's the big big for me i really don't like that but um after like doing the leka for a while i i found a drawback that is taking a lot of time moving around the plants i can't just you know bring one watering cans watering all the plants um, i have to bring them to the sink to fresh them i have to check the ph as well so that's a little bit too much when you reach to 50 to 100 plants in your collections it's not foreseeable for me so i change it find different approach i first discovered perlite is actually from perlite propagation just propagate the plant is, is not growing them and then doing more research find someone else on instagram that's growing per plants or in perlite mix so kind of like reach out to some other people learning more about it and trying out myself and i say i kind of still learning still experiment it i wish i'm more like the person who take note i'm not <laughs> so i can't tell you how often i water it i pretty much water them all the time because <laughs> i use spray i don't water like watering cans i go i go to my greenhouse i spray them once every day so once a day sometimes twice a day i don't have specific rules for you to water the plants but i can tell you what is this in this mix all my plants are growing in polite it was growing in like that before or it was um ship me bare roots so there's no dirt in it but in theory you can actually grow your plants with perlites with the dirt like you put your dirt in and then surround everything in perlites put a top dressing in parag as well because parag is part of the mix in the dirt right for your area mix when you have it in just the soil you water it regularly just like you would normally water your plants don't put any water reservoir first but then about a month or two when you start to grow some white fussy root or the uh, water roots then you can increase the amount of water in the plants like put more reservoir in it i haven't do any of the dirt mix in my setup i ready to wash it you don't have to wash it all all the way for your dirt uh, mix for semi hydroponics that's the other benefit of using a product the roots like shed less so most of my plant is already converted to semi hydroponic before i plant it to perlite or its bare roots the mix i have here is not just perlite i actually have about half and half perlite and pumice and then about 10% of leka i used to thought like um, leka is not necessary in the potting media doing more research and found what its nutrition is about and it's now i know that it's pretty important to add leka in the mix i used to just add a layer of leka underneath so that i can tell when to water the reason that i have a leka in it is how the nutrition works we know that the plant need the food but a lot of people include me that have a misconceptions about nutrition what the plant really need to be able to photosynthesize is actually just uh, water like and carbon dioxide they doesn't really need nutrition that's the main reason that why in the first few months you doesn't have to put any nutrition in your water at all they can survive just that three in the short term but in the long run your plant do need nutrition so after a month later you add a nutrition solution in it that's how your plant growing bigger and stronger the nutrition will be same as uh, in human wise is a uh, vitamins for us it's not a food it's like calcium that make our bone stronger so it's pretty important in the long run for for the plant to be able to grow bigger 
So to tie into the lega, most of soil ingredient we have perlite, uh, we have soil, we have sphagnum, we have peat moss. Some of them have what it call is a cash iron capacity, and in perlite they doesn't have those capacity. They have kind of like you know negative charge and positive charge in chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting like a little bit uh, technical. This is what I I kind of like um, doing some research and just like whoa, let really go crazy about it. You should check out his video. I watch it on YouTube. It's called Swedish Plant Guy. I love all his video. He is really really uh, knowledgeable. The plant mix person that I'm learning from is she is from Australia. I link her Instagram down below as well. She doing this for over years now. A lot of her plant is grow as big as she is growing in soil. So I can point you where the expert at. What I'm gonna say, yeah, the, the Swedish plant guy was talking about all about nutrition it need to know. So um, the cash ion capacity is like this positive and negative charge in the substrate that you have. Not all material in the substrate that have that capacity and perlite and pumice is one of that that doesn't have that capacity. So when you water your plant with the nutrition water, the water and the nutrition just come down right to the bottom. The root might be able to catch one or two a little bit but in the long run the root won't be able to get that nutrition from the perlite itself, even though your perlite is very moist. In the sense, it's just your perlite was just giving water, there's no nutrition in it. I would say like it's good for propagations if you want to just growing uh, roots, that will be my go through right now. Like if I want to propagate any plants, I will just use street perlite. There's no need to add any lega or pumice. But if you want to grow your plant in this mix, lega is one of the very important ingredient. And I only do 10% because if you go all street lega, just like the lega in semi hydroponic, you end up you have the salt built up on the top, and you have to fresh it every two weeks or a month. And so with my setup, I just think that because this is less lega, the salt build up will be less. This is why I found it's more attractive to me. It's easier to maintain. I grow them more like in growing in the soil. For this substrate, I was following with the girls that were in Instagram. But if you doesn't want to mix it yourself, um, there's one brand that make from Germans. It's pronounced Lechuga. Le I spell it down here. I actually bought one already and I just put some of my regular indoor plant in that to kind of experiment before I do a video of it. They also have pumice, lava zone, and they also have a slow release fertilizer. So in that mix, it's pre-made for you. You can just try on that. But their mix is way smaller than I have. My perlite and pumice is three and egg size like more chunkier because the plant that I grow is mostly aeroid they are more appreciative if we give them a lot more air in the root system to plant them in perlite mix if your plant is still new to the semi hydroponics suggest you to plant halfway on the top of the perlite there's more new water root coming down like I like to use this uh, transfusion pot. I got this from Amazon. So I like this pot because I can see through how and when I should water the plants. With the polite mix, it depends on different type of plant that you own. So I have here is philodendron, alocasia, and anthurium. This is my top three genus that I love. They do have a different requirement. For the alocasia, they love it to be always moist but not wet. I actually kind of making the mistake of leaving water underneath. This one has a gap in between the ground and the pot, about like quarter in. So I, I like this pot because then the water won't touch the pearl like itself directly. It won't absorb the water go up, but it will encourage the root to reach down to get a water root. If you have a location, I would say don't put the water in it. It does have water root down here because this is the location that I have in semi hydroponic, so it doesn't rot as bad but I wouldn't do this anymore. I would do top water for this one and when I top water it I would try not to have any water drain from the bottom because this alocasia like it to be moist but they doesn't like to have a wet fit. I find that my alocasia grow really really well in her life. I do not know why because you can see this is the newest leaf that is grow in the perlite. It was in Leica for as long as I have it, maybe five months, six months, and it's keep only have two to three leaves when I have it in Leica. And now I think about a month ago, I transferred this to the polite mix and it gives me this new 
leaf. And this new leaf, it, you can tell from the size that it's already bigger than the older leaf. So I do believe that my technique can be successful if I don't screw up anything. <laughs> and one of the things about this mix is I do add a slowly this fertilizer on the top here. This is the green fertilizer that you use it on the regular soil mix. I believe it does work as well in the perlite. I will find out. So yeah, for allocation, I would suggest do top water and no water underneath at all. You want it to be just moist like this, have um, condensation on the container and they will be happy and keep it moist. For the philodendron, they like it to be moist but they like it to be dry in between watering. So there's no water at all in, that, in the pot here but I can see that here is really moist. I put a sphagnum on the top because that I can um, make the whole pot more evenly moist because in you have polite is always the top dry up first like very quickly i wish i remember one with the melasam that i water it but for uh for this philodendrons i water from the bottom so i let it go up to about one to two centimeter on the polite let the polite absorb all the water itself and then after it dry out i leave the water in the tray like to encourage some of the root to come down here. This is a new root that coming out after I put it in polite. And uh, this is a new leaf that come out. I don't know if I'm doing successful yet because I see the leaf is still slightly smaller. And this one, this is uh, my philodendron McDell that I got from Cat Philodendron. It was growing in the soil and I just transferred this to the polite mix. So I wash all the roots. I clean my best, but they're still not super clean. Not all of the root is water root or semi-hydroponic root yet. So, but you can already see that there's some red fuzzy root coming out. For philodendron, you want it dry in between. For this one, I only have one pot set up like this. I have the string coming out from here and there's wood already come out. This right now have no water because this pot has been wet over months. Even right now, it's still really wet. And I already seen that the wood that come out has got rotten. It was way too moist. So even though right now the top is dry, I don't water it for maybe another two weeks because I hope to be make this one not completely dry but slightly dry before I add new water. As you can see I have different leaf size. This is the leaf that I grow in soil. Um, all other three also growing in soil and I think if you let it dry out a little bit more it push out bigger leaf. So this is my newest leaf. It's so small. It's been be constantly wet. I don't know why somehow if you get your plant moist and dry in between the plant grow actually bigger and healthier. So that's why I have been still experiment on the wet dry cycle. I don't know how would be able to achieve it if you were just let the water moist the whole month. My goal is to put enough water that it will be dry out in about two weeks max. So right now still adjusting when I should water it, when I shouldn't water it. And also your house and my house is gonna be different. So. You have to kind of monitoring what you do, but the point is like even growing in polite, you do need to give them a dry cycle. Growing polite might be kind of similar as you growing in the dirt now, but the benefit of it is there's no fungus nuts <laughs> that will flying around. One very sad news is that if you doing growing your plant in polite or like a, or semi hydroponic, you do still get bugs. I was shocked one time that I find a trip in my in my house, like in my collection, because I was like, this entire room has all like a what happening. Fun fact about trip is they don't lay egg in dirt, they lay egg in the leaf. So it was springtime about two months ago. They are start too active in spring so that's where you see internet people was like oh what happened to my plant oh i found this <laughs> it happened to me too <laughs> it was laying egg on the leaf that i purchased over the winter time and it was kind of winter they don't hatch after the springtime come they start to hatch and it's like horrible don't think that semi hydroponic would not have bug it's still gonna catch you if you if you're not careful enough the perlite pumice mix is more like a new trend in US. People have been doing this for quite a long time, especially in Australia or in Europe, they do semi-hydroponics. Some people has able to manage to grow as big as in the, in the soil. So follow those people. I think that's, that would be my best tip for, for everyone here.
<laughs> but thank you for watching though. Thank you for following my experiments. <laughs> I'm getting an outdoor greenhouse very soon. So when I have an outdoor greenhouse, some of my plants will actually go back to soil um, because I want to have automatic sprinkler system in in that outdoor greenhouse. <laughs> I think that's way easier for me to water them. So, but the one in the house because I really hate fungus nuts. So I will still keep it in semi hydroponics. Um, that's I would say that for me semi hydroponic. That is my biggest advantage and my the appeal to me that why I do semi hydroponics. <laughs> if you have any questions, remember to put the comments down below. And if you feel that thing helpful this video, uh, share with your friends, share on Facebook, um, help me to reach out to more people. People. Um, again, thank you for watching. Um, happy planting. Bye bye.